That was Army Major General William Taylor at the Pentagon earlier with an update on the evacuation efforts in Afghanistan. The fall of Afghanistan to the Taliban has created a massive humanitarian crisis in our country and around the world. We've been seeing the harrowing images of Afghanis desperately trying to flee their country by any means possible. But the question of what to do with them and the thousands of locals who helped American troops over the last 20 years still remains. Joining us to discuss is Vice President for the National Security and Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation, Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano, and also with the Heritage Foundation, former Acting Customs and Border Patrol Commissioner Mark Morgan. Gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Good to be with you. Thank you for having us, ladies. All right, Colonel, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Biden's withdrawal plan, as we are seeing, has created this massive humanitarian crisis that I don't think anyone could have predicted uh, some of these images that we're seeing. Uh, but this raises the question, what is going to happen to these refugees and what is the U.S.'s responsibility uh, for these people on the ground? Well, first of all, I, I completely disagree with you. This was an incredibly predictable crisis. And... And we start from, from zero. We, we're, we're completely unprepared for this. I, I think the United States has a moral obligation to assist refugees. Refugees are a legitimate humanitarian concern. And the United States is actually the world's global leader in taking care of refugees. Uh, but I should say this is actually a global responsibility. And the United States and all of, the, all of NATO was involved and, and several other countries were involved in Afghanistan. We, we all share this moral compulsion, and we should the responsibility. So the first and most important thing is to get these people out of the country and to get American citizens and other Western citizens out of the country and out of harm's way to a safe place and then proceed with, with, uh, with finding homes for them. Now, Mark, where exactly are these homes going to be located? Are they going to be in the United States? Is it the United States' responsibility to take on all of these refugees? Will it be shared with other countries? And what is our system um, right now in the U United States for taking in refugees? And will this influx of Afghan refugees overwhelm the system? Or are we well-equipped and ready to handle it? Hey, first of all, I say Jim's right. This is, this is very much anticipated, and, and we're way behind the power curve here. And look, our immigration system, it's already overwhelmed. It's already yeah. broke. And it's broke because this administration dismantled the effective system we had under the Trump administration. Right now, I mean, the, the 212,000 uh, apprehensions on the southern border, and we know the majority of those are economic migrants breaking into our country in violation of our laws. And if this country and this administration has been so distracted with facilitating and creating a crisis on the southwest border, maybe they could have been done a better job of anticipating what was going to happen in Afghanistan. And what's critically really important, we need to define the two categories real quick. One is the SIV, the, the Special Immigrant Visa. Those are designed for the, the Afghans that have, have sacrificed everything and jeopardized their lives and the lives of the family to help our military personnel in our country. These past, especially since April, we should, that's, this should have been our top priority to make sure that we get those individuals safe in this country. But they're too distracted with a broken, overwhelmed immigration system that they cause. And for the, the, the general Afghan population, look, as Jim said, this is a global responsibility. And we have to temper our compassion with intelligence, literally and figuratively. We can't ignore what, what extensive process to vet to make sure that we're not further jeopardizing our country. Absolutely. I mean, this is the reason we went to the Middle East in the first place, was to protect our shores, uh, to retaliate after what happened on 9-11. Uh, but, Colonel, do we have the right vetting process in place for this influx? Because you can only imagine al-Qaeda right now, ISIS right now, is figuring out how to pose as a refugee to enter into our shores. Yeah, you know, to Mark's point, the Trump guys, they could have done this in a heartbeat. They had the system down pat. They had the numbers were so low, and they had weeded out all the false claims. They have more than the processing capability to do this. But this gets to the fundamental problem that Mark and many other conservatives have been hammering for years. Obama and Biden have taken what is an important humanitarian tool, refugee processing, and they've used it as a political tool, as an excuse to find ways to just bring in illegal immigrants. And, and I think in many Americans have become soured on the whole refugee thing because they've seen how it's been exploited and, and used as a political tool. 
And this is really shame on Obama and shame on Biden, because America ought to take pride in its refugee processing. Instead, just like they're trying to take our voting system and turn it against us, they're trying to take our refugee system and they're trying to use it for their politics. And then when real things happen like this, and this is, we're a deer in the headlights. You know, we have a military that's running around doing, you know, woke training and gender equity and everything else. And then a real crisis hits and we're unprepared for it. Obama and Biden, they play with national security tools like they're, like they're just another political instrument. And when real stuff happens, real people die, they bleed, they suffer, and our security is compromised. Mark, real quick, in about 30 seconds, and I know this is a lot, but, you know, four people on the FBI's terror watch list have been at, arrested at the southern border since October. Um, our border agents are tapped and dealing, having to deal with hundreds of thousands of crossings. How can we be certain that they're not, there will not be a security breach at the southern border? We can't, and there absolutely is a significant threat, especially specifically what just happened in Afghanistan. It's actually 14 individuals that have been apprehended by the Border Patrol this fiscal year that are on the terror screening database. 300,000 Godaways. Look, if you don't think that the terrorist organizations are continuing to look for vulnerabilities, uh, we're, we're mistaken. And right now, our open borders are such a vulnerability. This is a real threat, and we should all be very concerned. Mm. Colonel, Commissioner, thank you so much for your time tonight. We're going to have to have you back to continue this conversation. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.